Hello, I'm Joshua Carr. Today I'd like to talk to you about Scenario Manager. Scenario Manager is, in my opinion, one of the least used and most powerful tools in Excel modeling. Um, it's basically a cousin of Goal Seek and Data Table. It's listed actually under What If Analysis. There it is on the data bar. Um, and again, no one seems to use it, but I think once I show it to you, you'll start using it on a pretty regular basis. So let's say we have the world's dumbest cash flow statement. As you can see here, we have a little cash flow model. We've got a purchase price of 600. We've got a sale price of 690. There's five years of hold. I'm using the six year of NOI to go calculate a sale price. I'm capping that in an eight cap. The important thing for this conversation is we have some stuff which is being driven by a couple of assumptions, rent growth and expense growth. And then on the other side, as far as the output goes, we have an internal rate of return calculation and a net present value calculation. Now, normally, if most people wanted to mess with this model, they put in two and two for rent and expense, and then they try three and two, or they try four and one. And of course, as you change these rent growth and expense growth numbers, you get different internal rates of return and net present value calculations on the bottom. Okay, so uh, what is the idea of Scenario Manager? Well, basically, instead of running three versions of this, 10 versions of this, 20 versions of this, you basically build the model one time, and then you vary the inputs to get different outputs. So I take this little model, I go up here to What If Analysis, I go to Scenario Manager. I'm going to add my first scenario, which I will call Base Case. And I will tell it what my inputs are. That's the changing cells. And that would be C8 and C9. Sorry, D8 and D9. I then press OK. As you can see, I've got 2% for D8 and 2% for D9. And I press OK again. And then I add a version I'll call high rent, again D8, D9, and here I'll make it 4% for rent, 2% for expense, and then finally I'll add a third version that I'll call high expenses, and in that one I'll have 2% for rent and 4% for expense. So now I've got three scenarios. And the idea here is instead of having three copies of the same model, I just have one model, but I put my inputs in as different scenarios. Now, first off, if I just want to go from version one to version two to version three, I can just double click on stuff. I can be like, well, let me see the high rent. I double click on that. And as you can see, my internal rate of return goes to a little shy of 15. I could double click on expenses and now my IR goes to 8.87. I could double click back on base case and again it replaces everything with a 2 and a 2. It's very important to make sure that all of the scenarios use all the same inputs. This way when you go from version 1 to version 2 to version 3 and back again it re-updates it. Then I could press summary. I could pick a couple cells I would like to summarize say 11 for the IRR and 25 for the NPV and here's the fun part when I press OK it creates a new worksheet where as you can see we have base case of 2 and 2 high rent of 4 and 2 high expense of 2 and 4 I'm changing cells D8 and D9 and you can see the different results I sometimes refer to this worksheet as the magic page because it basically takes any model you've built and it gives you all the possible outputs and then you can see version 1 versus version 2 versus version 3. Now this page is static. That is to say once you've generated it, if you start messing around with what's on the other sheets, this page isn't going to automatically update. You would have to again go to what if analysis and run scenario manager all over again. That said, it's incredibly useful. Uh, I often will use this because too often when I've made multiple copies of the same model, 
I'll make a mistake, I'll make a typo, I then have to fix the typo in all the versions. Here, it's one model, one place where the inputs are, one place where the outputs are, it's pretty clean. Probably the biggest complaint I get about this tool is someone will say, well, wait a moment, I don't want to call it D8 and D9, I want to name the cells using Name Manager. While I personally am not a big fan of Name Manager, if you choose to use Name Manager, and you could, uh, then when you did this and you ran this tool, instead of it saying D8 and D9, it would have the names of uh, what those cells were. Or if you want, you can always just go here and type it, and you can be like, hey, this is rent growth, and this is expense growth, IRR, NPV. You know, you can format and make it pretty if that makes you happy. Um, yeah, great. Well, that's Scenario Manager. If you're interested in more content like this, or if you, if you have any suggestions for additional content, please contact me at josh at kahrrealestate.com. My email address is in the upper left-hand corner of the video. Or if you'd like to attend one of my live classes, I run them every six to eight weeks in New York City. If you can't attend in person, you can always attend it as a webinar. I also deliver classes on-site for corporations and universities throughout the world. You can read more about it on my website, again, at kahrrealestate.com. And again, the web address is in the upper left-hand corner of the video. Thanks again, and keep on building better models.